Okay. So, hey everyone, if you don't already know me, especially people on Zoom, I am Sally Hurst. I did my undergraduate here at Macquarie, majoring in paleobiology and Egyptology. Um, and now I'm in the first year of my EMRAs um, here at Macquarie with Glenn as my supervisor. Um, this was just a one-off bit of research which I thought looked really interesting. So today we're going to be looking at the crocs of the Cretaceous, investigating the decline and extinction of the terrestrial Notosuchians. So our extant crocodilians are very poor representatives of the former diversity of the crocodilian warfer clade that peaked in the Cretaceous. So while modern forms are all semi-aquatic uh, carnivores, the Notosuchians inhabited a very wide range of ecological niches and environments that are not often associated with crocodilians, including things like terrestrial herbivores and omnivores. So for reference, we're looking at the tiny little guy here who's about to get eaten rather than the very large carnivores. So the terrestrial Notosuchians provide a very rich case study for Cretaceous crocodilomorph diversity. However, a comprehensive review of their decline and extinction has never been completed. So that's what I set out to do. Um, investigation of this decline and extinction can also help us to understand why we don't have any terrestrial forms in our modern crocodiles. Okay, it's going to work. There we go. Uh, so for today, I want to introduce you to our Notosuchians, give you a bit of background on who they were, what they were doing, and introduce you to some of my favourite species. Um, I also want to explore the hypotheses for their decline and extinction, as well as link to some of the current extinction drivers that modern crocodilians are facing. And I'll also provide some suggestions for future research. So the Notosuchians were a fossil group that existed from the mid-Jurassic around 167 million years ago to the Miocene around 11 million years ago. They are predominantly from Gondwanan deposits, especially of South America and Africa. Um, sorry. Um, and pretty much all of the group went extinct in the late Cretaceous, except for one clade, which made it through the extinction and existed until the Miocene, um, and that group's called the Sabicidae. But my research just focused on the Cretaceous forms. So despite the wide disparity of morphologies and ecological niches that the uh, Notosuchians inhabited, which we'll take a look at in just a minute, they did have some uniting features. So this was generally much shorter, wider um, snouts and skulls than a lot of other modern crocodiles. So on this figure, Notosuchians are represented by Comahusuchus on the side, um, who definitely has this short, wide skull morphology. Um, other things that unite the Notosuchians is things like gracile limb elements, because that's how they were inferred to be terrestrial, um, as well as the placement of the orbits and nares. Um, and some species also had unique mammal-like dentition, which isn't really seen in any other crocodile groups that we know of. So despite these uniting features, uh, the phylogeny and their relationships of Notosuchians have been frequently contested and revised. So in this uh, study, or in my study, I follow the phylogeny proposed by Pohl et al. in 2014. Um, it's definitely the most comprehensive phylogeny. It included 109 different crocodilomorph species and scored 412 different um, morphological traits. Um, and right down the bottom of this phylogeny, we can see that Yusukia is present. So I'll just zoom in. So Yusukia includes all of our modern crocodiles of which we only have about 24 species. Um, Notosuchia, as far as we know, had about double that diversity with at least 50 different species. Now, before we do dive into uh, the extinctions of this group, I do want to introduce you to a few of my favourites. Um, I find them a very charismatic group, and so it was some of these weird and wonderful species that kind of led me to um, do this research. So to start off with, um, these are probably our most crocodile looking um, crocodilomorphs or Notosuchians. We have Stratiosuchus and Varosuchus. Uh, these guys are from the late Cretaceous of Brazil, actually from the same formation. They were both around four meters long and were hyper predators um, in their environments. And they are thought to have filled the niches of theropod dinosaurs in their environments. So it's very rare that theropod bones were found in the same deposits as um, these Notosuchians. 
and so it thought that they were the apex predators rather than any dinosaurs. Okay, so the next one, oh, and a main thing that differentiates um, these guys and pretty much all Notosuchians is that instead of having a sort of bent sprawling stance like most of our modern crocodiles, they had this very straight erect stance. So they probably had these long legs, which were really good for running and chasing after prey, which definitely helped them to be apex predators. Uh, next up, we have Yakarani. Um, definitely does not look like a crocodile skull, and he's definitely not one of the cute ones. Um, this guy is nicknamed the rabbit croc because he has these really long, weird incisors. Um, and while you can't see it as much on this diagram, he does actually have heterodont teeth, so he's proposed to be um, an omnivore. Um, but this croc was only about 80 centimetres long, so he's not particularly big. Uh, next up, we have Pissarra Chamsa. So this one um, was about 2.4 metres long, also from Brazil. And he's really odd because this creature did not have any osteoderms. Now, osteoderms are pretty much a staple of most crocodiles. Um, and so everyone was very confused when they found this one without them. Um, originally, it was thought maybe this was a preservational thing that they simply didn't survive the fossilization process. But additional skeletons of this species have been found also without osteoderms, even when other crocodilian species from the same formation were preserved with osteoderms. So originally it was thought that osteoderms acted as a supportive bracing system for terrestrial locomotion. Um, but for this species, because he didn't have anything, everyone was very confused. So instead they suggested that this lack of osteoderms could have increased flexibility and agility um, for terrestrial hunting. Um, more recently, there was a fossil of this um, croc found in conjunction with a small clutch of eggs. Um, most crocodiles generally have quite large crocodiles, uh, well, modern ones do, um, but this one only had about four to five eggs in that clutch. So it suggested that this species and other Notosuchians were potentially case-selected animals with high parental care. Um, on the complete other end of the armor spectrum, we have the armadillo sucus, um, also from Brazil and about two meters long. Um, this one does have osteoderms, but unlike traditional osteoderms, they were more like the flexible bands and rigid shields found on, on armadillos and even glyptodonts. Um, and so again, just a really weird species. Uh, just to add to the weirdness, we have Anatosuchus, which is known as the duck-billed crocodile. Uh, while he was terrestrial, it is suggested that he waded into um, aquatic environments to eat small aquatic prey. Um, and lastly, we have my absolute favourite, who definitely inspired the entire project. It's Sinosuchus. Uh, this very tiny crocodile um, was a little herbivore from the late Cretaceous of Madagascar. Um, if I could bring him back as a companion animal, I absolutely would, because I think he's adorable. Uh, so he's definitely the cutest of the Notosuchians, and he also had these really weird mammal-like teeth. Um, and so pretty much whenever the literature cites these mammal-like teeth, it's uh, Simosuchus teeth that they are referring to, because they're quite like things like possum teeth, which have um, these multi-cusped ridges. Um, and because I adore Simosuchus so much, I wanted to know why he and his relatives went extinct. So as Notosuchians and their ecological niches are so weird, it's generally that their lifestyles um, and diets which are focused on in the literature rather than any discussion of their extinction or decline. Um, and so despite this, there have been three main events um, which have been identified repeatedly, which potentially contributed to the decline and extinction. Um, but a lot of these are always very briefly mentioned. It's usually like a single offhand um, sentence in the literature. Um, now, as John has pointed out to me, pretty much all of the data surrounding these guys is qualitative, not quantitative. So there hasn't really been any studies done on things like diversity dynamics or anything else. Um, so a lot of these hypotheses, again, are very hypothetical, theoretical um, suggestions. So the first event that has been um, proposed a lot is climatic changes in the late Cretaceous. So as the distribution of modern crocodiles is physiologically constrained by their ability to withstand certain temperatures, they can generally withstand temperatures of about 14.2 degrees and above. Uh, it's been suggested that the Notosuchians had similar temperature constraints, um, which kind of affected their distribution. So any climatic changes to their environments would have impacted them heavily. 
So the Cretaceous period was largely defined by warm um, temperatures associated with um, a greenhouse earth phenomenon. Um, and this, these warm temperatures would have allowed for increased resource collection for growth, movement um, and adaptive radiation. Uh, it's also been suggested that these warm temperatures generally um, drove animal and plant evolution globally. Um, and this paired with the coevolution of insects and flowering plants likely led to the evolution of new um, dietary preferences and ecological niches for things like the Notosuchians to exploit. Um, and another study also showed that there was a link between warmer temperatures and high evolutionary rates in archosaurs. So this um, probably also allowed the Notosuchians to diversify quite rapidly during the Cretaceous. So sedimentological deposits associated with Notosuchian fossils, especially from South America and Africa, have been indicative of a warm semi-arid environment. Um, as many Notosuchians are found within these warm arid belts, temperature as a driving force of Notosuchian diversity appears quite possible. Um, terrestriality has been or was initially, may have initially been an adaptation to these arid environments with resource collection further away from water sources. And estivation or burrowing behaviours um, may also have been suggested, has also been suggested to be an adaptation by the Notosuchians for these arid temperatures or arid environments. So this specialisation for warm semi-arid environments meant that a global cooling event in the late Cretaceous tested the physiological constraints of the ectothermic Notosuchians. While other semi-aquatic um, and marine crocodile moths may have had the ability to retreat to warmer waters, the predominantly terrestrial Notosuchians were geogra geographically constrained and thus detrimentally impacted. Uh, so the drop in global temperatures would have led to cascading effects of resource scarcity as plants and animals struggled to adapt to new conditions. And this decline in food resources likely affected Notosuchian metabolic function and reproduction leading to a major decline. So while a lot of this data at first seems quite convincing, it seems to line up quite well, um, a lot of the paleoclimatic data, um, both for the semi-arid environments and the global cooling event do face several issues. So firstly, the precision of dating the paleoclimatic data to um, specific fossils and specific ages can be quite variable. And a lot of the time, these um, temperatures do focus on global trends rather than regional or local ones. Um, another issue that comes up repeatedly is the possibility of taphonomic biases. So a lot of these areas where these fossils are being found are still quite dry um, and exposed. So it may just be that we are finding these fossils um, in these areas rather than in the tropics where they're still under the cover of rainforests or they just didn't preserve at all. And another issue that's common to all of these extinction events and just paleontology in general is that any behaviours or tolerances, um, they don't survive, they don't fossilise. Um, so unfortunately, we don't have those. And even with that, a lot of the comparisons um, of tolerances between Notosuchians are based on comparisons with modern crocodiles. But as we've seen, they were so ecologically different that these comparisons may not even be accurate. So despite these issues, there's definitely a strong link between temperature and the distribution of modern crocodilians. So this uh, figure shows that a lot of the populations of modern crocodilians are centred around the tropics and the equator, or definitely these warmer areas. Um, and with the current global warming trend, we may expect that this distribution of crocodiles will expand um, as the globe gets warmer. Um, potentially even branching into the terrestrial morph space of the Notosuchians. However, that's pretty much going to be prevented by the wide distribution of human populations um, and the resulting actions um, of habitat destruction and fragmentation, uh, direct predation by humans and the annihilation of um, crocodilian food base. And that's an issue that crocodiles and many other species are facing now and in the future. Now, whenever talking about the uh, KPG mass extinction, I feel that it is a requirement to include a picture like this. Um, I did try and find a picture of a meteorite hitting a crocodile. It was a little bit too niche, so <laughs> it does not exist. Um, so anyway, the first pulse of Notosuchian decline left the group vulnerable, um, and it meant that they were again hit hard by the Cretaceous Paleogene mass extinction. 
uh, with all clades except Sabicidae going extinct. So the meteorite that hit the earth, it set off a series of cascading events leading to a global biodiversity crash and the extinction of many animal groups. So the intense heat and radiation from the bolide impact uh, may have ignited wildfires on a global scale. Uh, the dust, um, smoke and ash from the impact, as well as the release of significant CO2 and debris into the atmosphere, potentially blocked out the sun for over a year, uh, with photosynthetic production being impacted for at least the next decade. So all of this culminated in a global cooling event. Um, and as Afa mentioned, the close relation or potential relationship between temperature and Notosuchian diversity um, likely meant that they were in decline again at this stage. Um, now, oddly enough, a lot of or several estimates for um, the global biodiversity extinction it sits at around 75% of species on Earth. Um, but some more recent species, uh, studies have um, estimated that freshwater environments only had about um, between 10 to 22 percent of species going extinct, so a much lower rate. Um, and so it's been suggested that this ability to live in the water protected some species, including our modern crocodilian ancestors, and a combination of dormancy, detritus feeding and laying eggs in fresh water um, could have helped to protect um, our current crocodilians. Uh, weirdly enough, the Sabicidae who did survive were also terrestrial, so we're not really sure how they managed to get through the extinction. Um, and unfortunately, the fossil record for that group between the Cretaceous and the Miocene when they eventually went extinct is quite patchy. Um, and there's also some debate on if Sabicidae should be included in Notosuchia or as a sister group to Notosuchia, so that may also rule them out. So the complete destruction of many environments and habitats by things like the fires, the eruptions and other climatic events at the KPG boundary um, provides similar extinction conditions to what some crocodilians are facing today. Um, however, much of this modern habitat destruction is not um, from an extraterrestrial or environmental process, but uh, human induced environmental changes. Now, the final hypothesis of noticing decline and extinction is competition with mammals. So this idea has long been argued for to have taken place both before and after the KPG mass extinction. Um, both of them are largely theoretical. Um, there's been very little material from mammals found in the same deposits as Notosuchians. Um, and many Gondwanan mammals at this time were significantly smaller than the, God, uh, than the Notosuchians. So instead of competition, it's been suggested that niche partitioning happened instead uh, through much of the Mesozoic and after. However, later mammal competition is thought to be the reason why the surviving um, carnivorous Sabicidae in the Cenozoic never diversified into the cranial morphospace or wide dietary range of the Cretaceous Notosuchians. Um, so as mentioned, a lot of this is theoretical and the inability to test this theory has kind of been um, a major issue um, because the ecological relationships between mammals and crocodiles have changed so drastically since the Cretaceous. Um, yet I would still love to see a bunny rabbit take on a crocodile. Uh, so continued competition with other animals and human species has likely led to the current low diversity of crocodilians today. While some crocodilians remain apex predators in their environments, the negative impacts of competition and conflict with humans over food resources, livestock, land and waterways um, has meant that the modern species are generally in decline globally with approximately 30% of all uh, crocodilian species um, classified as critically endangered. Now, there is still a lot we don't know about the Notosuchians. As I mentioned, there hasn't really been any quantitative studies done on them. So anything done on things like diversity dynamics in this realm would be great. Um, but on a smaller scale, things like biomechanical modeling of jaw mechanics um, and muscle reconstructions to look at um, terrestrial locomotion and see how far they could actually travel. Um, other things like the differential impact of the KPG mass extinction on freshwater versus marine versus terrestrial environments would be really interesting. And lastly, looking at the influences or other influences infecting, affecting modern crocodilian diversity, seeing if there was an extinction driver or other influence that wasn't really considered here, which may have influenced um, Notosuchian decline. Um, but this information can also just generally 
help to conserve our modern crocodilians. So I hope from this talk you will agree with me that the Notosuchians were very, very weird and cool. Um, they potentially, very potentially, went extinct due to changing temperatures and the KPG extinction with, again, possible competition with mammals, but somewhat unlikely. And similar extinction drivers such as temperature, habitat destruction and humans, mainly humans, um, are causing current crop declines and extinctions. So it is possible that the semi-aquatic lifestyles of our modern crocodilians have helped to conserve their current diversity not only protecting them from environmental changes, but also from increasing conflict with humans. Being a terrestrial species, humans have not yet dominated all freshwater and marine environments, where some of these crocodilian species still manage to thrive. Um, and so the conservation of our enduring modern crocodiles is not only essential as they are very important parts of their aquatic ecosystems, but because they also provide a glimpse into the past and may help to further our knowledge on their extinct Notosukian relatives. References? Any questions?